in uh, Revelation 2, 7, he who has an ear, this is a typical way that he closes out uh, to each church. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And, of course, that's very important. Uh, all of us, we always begin our Bible studies with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And, and it's because of this type of reference. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Uh, so we always begin with an idea of, through our priesthood, confess sin and study the scriptures where the Holy Spirit can teach us. So this is a typical way to John. He closes out all, all the writings to the churches this way in his writing. He who has an ear on him here with the Spirit has just said to the church, uh, to him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. Okay? To him who overcomes, that's a typical, again, it's another one of those typical things that John uses, overcoming, because let me tell you, he pastored in his latter years in a very, probably his entire life, but in the latter years under enormous persecution for his faith. <clears throat> uh, to him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. We're talking about John is going to come back to this subject in chapter 22. For example, in, Revela in Revelation 22, 2, in the middle of the street on either side of the river was a tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. There will be, there will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and the bondservants will serve him. And so we begin to see John, he opens uh, the book up with the first church discussing the tree of life, and he closes his book down with it. So it's a pretty big subject to John, and it's a subject that John would have gathered from the Genesis account. So that, it's, it's just kind of interesting to me. Uh, we, we have learned so far that the tree of life was in the period of innocence in the Garden of Eden. We have learned something really important about it. Watch this now. We have learned that one of the four original trees in the Garden of Eden was the tree of life. And listen, its fruit identified its name. It's the tree of life. We also learn that the Hebrew word for life is plural. I wrote this on your paper. C-H-A-Y-Y. -Y, uh, it should be uh, I am. It, it, the H is not necessary. The C-H-A-Y-Y I am. And that I am on the end of that word in Hebrew makes that plural. Like Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M, that's plural. When you have an end of a Hebrew word, it ends in an I-M, it's plural. Therefore, when it's called the tree of life, in fact, it's called the tree of lives. <coughs> that's important. That's important because the tree of life stands in contrast uh, to death. Dying, you will die. That's important for you to understand. We have learned that this word is plural. During the period of innocence, its fruit produced an effect of immorality to the body. Immortality, immortality not immorality. Immortality to the body, internal life to the soul. In other words, dying you will die had a physical and a spiritual side to it. So did this. 
the plurality of death and the plurality of life. <clears throat> this lesson today will close with four aspects of the tree of life located in the new heaven and the new earth in Revelation. John has written, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, and then regards, To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. <clears throat> let me show you something. In 2 Corinthians, now you're familiar with this, but let's just remind ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 12, Paul has had this experience in his life where he was absent from the body and present with the Lord. He's not quite sure if, it, if, it, if he actually died and did it or was in a, 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 an unconsciousness position, but what he saw was very real. Are you with me? This is how he describes it. In 2 Corinthians uh, uh the 12th chapter, he reads about at least six verses on it. And when he, he talks about, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or not, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know, I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into the paradise. So, we're talking about the third heaven, and we're talking about paradise. We're talking about paradise. The paradise. Paradise. And heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. In other words, Paul learned things that he's not ever able to tell about in detail. On behalf of such a man I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not, except in regard to my weaknesses, and you, he goes on, and he's going to tell you that he had a thorn in the flesh as a reminder never to tell the details of what he witnessed in the paradise of God. Are you with me? Yes. All right. I'm just trying to establish a connection with this paradise, a, a Garden of Eden paradise idea that it was in the Old Testament is now in the New Testament. It was on earth and now was in heaven. In par there, it's identified as paradise in the third heaven. That's all I'm establishing with you at this point. Point number one, in the fall of Adam, we call it Adam's original sin of Romans 5.12, wherefore is by one man Adam sinned into the world and death by sin, and so it passed to all mankind. In the fall of Adam, immortality and eternal life were lost along with the innocence of man. They, they didn't have access to the tree. We learned that's from the study of the tree of life in the garden during the period of innocence, as we just covered in, our, in the first hour. It is interesting that after they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were not permitted to ever eat from the tree of life. They were forbidden. Then they were driven out of the garden even Eden and away from the tree of life. The NIV writes about this in a, a great footnote. They said the sword of God's judgment, which was placed at the east gate, stood between fallen man and God's garden, or the tree of life. This reason is given in Genesis 3.22, only, only through God's redemption in Christ as man has access again to the tree of life in Revelation 22. What has occurred from Je the tree in Genesis and Revelation is the coming of Christ, and no man can come to the Father except through me. You know that John 14.6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. What has transpired, of course, we have it in Genesis, in Messianic theology of prophecy, and then we have it in the reality of, of, of historical prophecy, that Christ has come. In the Old Testament, 
one day Christ would come, he would die on a cross, he would be buried and raised from the dead. It was a prophetic gospel. After Jesus Christ came and was identified as Emmanuel and the Savior of the world, then we're in a whole different ball game. We're in a historical of the coming of Christ. The, the historical messianic prophecy is now historical prophecy. Point number two. Fallen, unregenerated man, Adam sin, is not allowed access to the tree of life for immortality of the body or for eternal life of the soul, listen to me, apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, how important is the gospel of Jesus Christ? How important is that we get it right? I mean, it's, it's very important. I mean, where does it start? Dying, you will die. Well, how do I get out of death and into life? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, I, oh, the eternal life enters into me and I enter into it. Positional truth. If any man be in Christ, he has eternal life. Eternal life is in Jesus. If you're in Jesus, you have eternal life. <clears throat> you see, I don't get it because I behave. I don't get it because I do good. I get it because I'm in Christ. How do I get in Christ? Gal Galatians 3.27. The moment I believe the gospel, I'm baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ. Jesus Christ is eternal. 1 John 5, 11 through 13. Jesus Christ is eternal life. If, if you're in Christ, you have eternal life. Can I ever get out of Christ? Absolutely not. How did I get in? I got in by grace. I didn't get in by works. I didn't deserve it. I was granted that through Christ, through his work. After they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were not permitted ever to go back. Fallen, un unrege fallen unregenerated man is not allowed access except through the gospel of Christ. Listen to me. This is important on your paper. God could not allow an unregenerated soul to reside and an immortal body. Therefore, God made them garments of skin, of sacrificial animals, which was a visual aid of shadow Christology. Right? We, we read that in Genesis 3. This was the requirement for the atoning blood necessary for man to stand in the presence of God. They, 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 they were naked. They tried to cover themselves, right? God says, hold on a minute. Quit making these bad decisions. Come back to Bible study. Let me tell you what you got to do. And so they covered, they covered their nakedness with a garment of a sacrificial animal because the blood was used for atonement. And there we have the blood atonement system established throughout the rest of the Bible. <clears throat> listen, to, listen to Revelation 22, Revelation 22, 14, dealing with a subject with the tree of life business. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. You know what he's talking about? Wash, wash their robes with what? The blood of the Lamb. Your name is sealed in the book of life. The book of what? Life. The book of lives. The book of life. Right? The tree of life. The book of life. Right? It's sealed. Until the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30. Sealed until the day of redemption. You know what this book is called? This book of life is called the Lamb's Book of Life. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, the Passover lamb that's come to take away the sin of the world. This is what Adam and Eve had to do. Right? They did it and still got evicted from the garden. Agreed? Why do you read it? I mean, I... 
Just ask you to agree with God, not me. Because the other way had been provided, and that is the way of the blood of Christ. Do you understand that? The garments. He, he, he makes a reference to the robe. Listen, he, may, he makes a reference to the robe. Blessed are those who, who wash their robes so that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter. The reason that was shut down is because now the way to the tree of life is through Jesus Christ. And that and that that way that way stays open all the way to the end of time of human history. Right? All the way to the new heaven and new earth. <laughs> oh, aren't you glad you came to church today? Aren't you glad you came to church today? What a wonderful message we have through the world. What a wonderful message. Man, when I heard that, it set my world on fire. Blessed are those who have their Robes washed. John 1.29 talks about the Lamb's blood. 1 Corinthians 5.7 talks about the lamb, Lamb's blood. 1 Peter 1.18 and 19. I love that when Peter calls it the precious blood of Christ. The precious blood. Boy, he, was, he got emotional, didn't he? Precious blood. We all should. Listen to me. Could people make this mistake, and I don't want my people in this church to make this mistake. I wrote it down here and gave you a, an eye on it. They were driven away from the tree of life, but not from the life of God. Agreed? So you got to remember that stuff. Oh, people lie to you. They, they lost access to the tree. They lost access to the paradise, but they didn't lose access to God. Isn't that wonderful? Their worst day, God was still there for them. But you got to come to God on, on His terms, not yours. Listen to me, you got to come to God on His terms. When you're open to come on His terms, He's all over it. Point number three. God has provided fallen humanity a grace way back through the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who will believe. Isn't that simple? Boy, don't get more complicated than that. Doesn't make it complicated. <laughs> Hear those little feet pattering upstairs? They got, they're working them out. They're doing something, aren't they? They're making a lot of noise. If I can hear them, can they hear me? Is that one of those things that the tree falls in the forest? Isn't that one of those things? <laughs> Do, well, there, there's a teacher. Is it, I, I got you. Okay, so they don't hear me. That's it. Well, guys used to have at the other job. I used to have little kids would come up, come up to me. The parents wanted to know. Well, this is the pastor. I wanted to meet the pastor, and so they would meet him, and they go, like, "You are really loud." <laughs> uh, yeah, don't you forget it, kid. Don't you forget it. Listen to this. I love this. I love the way Peter describes the blood of Christ, but with the precious blood, as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless. The blood of Christ. My, has he not come a long way in his spiritual growth? This is a guy that stood with Christ when Christ was trying to explain to him about his precious blood, and Peter rebuked him in Matthew 16, 21 through 23. Rebuked him. Peter rebuked Jesus Christ. This guy's come a long way, hasn't he? See, I, I, I love Peter for there's hope for me. <laughs> there's hope for me. This is not how he, how he writes this now. Oh, the precious blood. Oh, he, is, he has such a grateful heart. With the precious blood as a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ... For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, 
but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Boy, there's hope for all of us. Just keep your nose in the Word of God. Keep your nose in the Word of God. Don't get it out of the Word. Just get your nose in the Word of God. Get your head in the Word, and the Word will get in your head, and your life will be a different life. It did it. Listen, Peter's a wonderful example of that. He was one of those guys who went to class and challenged just about everything Jesus had to say. Well, I don't know about that. And here he is now. He's made his journey. And, and now he speaks as an, a mature elder of the church. And he, 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 he talks about the precious blood. And you can, almost, you can almost feel him weeping over it. Oh, how is it that I missed my time with him when I had it. I don't know. I just think that way. 2 Timothy 1.10 But now has been revealed by the appearing, historical appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. You remember, I've told you this before, but you watch how these names are used by the writers Sometimes they'll say Jesus Christ, and sometimes they'll say Christ Jesus. Sometimes they'll say Jesus Christ Lord. Sometimes they'll say, and all of that's really important. Because when they're talking about Christ, they're talking about the Messiah of the Old Covenant. When they're talking about Jesus, they're talking about the humanity that identified, the humanity that identified who the Messiah, the Savior of the world would be. And Lord is that he has been raised from the dead, is seated at the right hand of God the Father with all authority in heaven. And you must never forget that the authority over your life is Jesus Christ. It ain't people. Never let people that. Never let them have that hold on your life. It's never about that. You want the guy who's got your hands, you know, in the hands of the hands of the man. That's where you want to be. You're in good hands. Point number four in closing. Oh, let me finish this. But now has appeared the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. See, what, was it, we've gone so full, full circle on this deal, haven't we? Four, the tree of life will reappear in God's garden of Eden in the new heaven and new earth as discussed to the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2.7, and then by John in the chapter 22. I gave you verses that were key. You know who this is for? This is for the redeemed of the ages. Isn't that good? The redeemed of the ages. Are you part of that group? Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead on the third day to bring you into a whole life system? Not just to save your soul, but to bring your soul into a life system of living. Wow. I mean, I'd have been, I think I'd have been pretty happy if I just to be saved and not go to hell. But I got so much more than that. I got I had no idea that he had a whole life planned and mapped out for me if I would but believe. That's amazing to me. Take a little, a little old country kid out of Podunk, Michigan and move him all the way to Moody, Alabama to be a missionary to St. Clair County is staggering to me. It's just staggering that God would choose me to do that. It overwhelms me. I'm just telling you, I'm a pretty happy camper to be here. Once again, the tree of life will be the centerpiece. Watch this. Watch this, because you're, you're going to sit in this garden over here in Revelation. You're one day going to sit in that garden. 
the tree of life will reappear in, the, in, in God's garden. And when it does, the, that tree of life will be the centerpiece of messianic theology in the new heaven, in the new heaven and earth. <laughs> it was that in the Old Testament. It will be that in the new. In the, middle of, in the middle of his street, on either side of the river, was the tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding his fruit every month. And the leaves of that tree were for the healing therapy, therapy of nations. Well, one day we'll actually get to that subject. It won't be today, though. But we will actually get that. That word for healing to nations, I wrote it in the Greek, is where you get the English word therapy. Therapy. Yeah. The leaves on it. Huh. That'd be better than marijuana. Says... There's a, there's a better leaf coming your way, so don't go this, don't take this one. Just wait for the other one. Wait for the other one. Well, let's have a word of prayer. Then Rick will pledge us out of here. Thanks for coming. Invite your friends. We, have still, we still have a little bit of room. We have a little bit of room. Father, we're so thankful for each that has chosen to come our way to study with us the Word of God. We don't have anything fancy to offer, just the Word of God. Is that sufficient, Father? Only those who sit in the pew know. We have done the level best we know how to prepare ourselves to feed these people that have come our way out of the book of Genesis. We have moved our way along with the subject matter into the book of Revelation to discuss something that is future. Something that we will see out in the future and we're there, we're there, it'll ring a bell in our soul of the Bible doctrine. I remember when we studied that. Won't that be wonderful? It's wonderful, Father, when we see the Word of God work in our life in so, such miraculous ways. And for the great ministries going on in our church, overseas and home. We sit in the middle of a great revival already happening. Already happening. Make us more aware of it and make us be more partners with it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>